Hello, my name is Brian Boyko. I'm part of the Square Peg development team here at Makersquare, where we worked on a very significant problem, keeping students engaged in today's classroom. Now, teachers today have an impossible problem. With Common Core and standardized testing, things might have gotten a little monotonous, and we need to keep students engaged while still preparing them with the skills they need. Um, traditional edutainment offerings like where is Carmen Sandiego, uh, Reader Rabbit, um, they're okay, but they're solo endeavors. And you can't really change the curriculum once you booted them up. So we wanted to create a system that allowed the whole class to get involved and that allowed the teacher to specify or amend the curriculum. Now our solution is DigiQuiz. It is a real-time, interactive, educational gameplay system that is basically a mobile question and answer platform. In other words, it plays Jeopardy. And here's how it works. Teachers log in to the dashboard where they can create, amend, or play decks. When the teacher launches a game, they're given a four-digit character room code which they share with class. And then students then enter that code on their mobile devices or laptops. No downloads needed, you just need an internet connection because we've designed the student view to be responsive. Now students can buzz in to answer and the teacher knows who buzzed in first, who buzzed in second, etc. They can also give real-time feedback to the teacher uh, and the teacher can then see it in their view. And we'll get, to more, uh, get more into that during the demo. Now our tech stack was Mongo, Express, Socket.io, and React.js. While our data was highly relational and we considered using Postgres for a while, it, the fact that MongoDB was just so flexible, it allowed, us to, it allowed us to rapidly iterate, create new features faster, and we decided to go for that for, during this development phase. Routing with ExpressJS, that was uh, pretty much a, a no-brainer because we couldn't, f you know, Express is pretty much the gold standard for both database uh, API routing and for just serving up web pages. Uh, WebSockets, uh, we use Socket.io. It was the most powerful and flexible solution. Now the reason we used WebSockets instead of Ajax calls was because of a very important thing. WebSockets was really designed to solve this real-time problem. With Sockets, you're able to essentially deliver the right views to the right subset of users. What that means in layman's terms is that you can have two teachers at opposite sides of the country running two games on the same server at the same time, and they're not going to pollute each other. Uh, and React.js was used for the view. The reason why we went with React instead of, say, something a little bit uh, bigger, like Angular, was because we wanted something that would use the virtual DOM to cut down on the render time. A lot of students have hand-me-down mobile devices, especially younger ones, and we didn't want them to be waiting too long. Uh, so there's less processing power, there might be less bandwidth available. We wanted to cut that down to the bare, uh, bare necessities. One of the things about our tech stack is that we chose these technologies because we believed them to be the best fit, not because we were familiar with them. We took on the challenge of teaching ourselves Mongo, Socket.io, and React.js because they are not part of the Makersquare curriculum it didn't deter us. We learned to, to teach ourselves and we put that into practice during this uh, project. And this is our team and I couldn't be prouder of them. Peter Doe, Juan Sierra, and of course me. Uh, all of them are fine developers and engineers and uh, good friends and I would not have been able to do this uh, without uh, the team or we wouldn't have been able to do it without each other is actually more accurate to say. Um, we went through some tough times and some hard work, and I'm glad that they're with us. Uh, you can view this slide deck at the links below. Uh, I'm sure there'll be uh, links below on YouTube. And now let's head to the live demo. As you can see, you can log in. We're going to use the demo account that we've already set up. Pete set up the authentication with Facebook, which was uh, very difficult, and I'm very happy about that, you know. That he was, that he rose to the challenge. Uh, we're going to go to my decks and launch this deck on uh, JavaScript and programming. 
Gonna hit play and start new game. As you can see, we have a four digit code right here, SLGP. Over here on the right, on the local host, we're going to type in uh, our username uh, and SLGP. Join the game. And as you can see, local is added to our active players list. And we're locals waiting for the question. What's also interesting is, as I said, you can use a mobile device as well. So, username, Android. And code SLGP. Join the game. As you can see, he's also waiting for the question. Okay. So, teacher launches this question. They get the question, uh, the category, and the answer. Uh, the category is frameworks. Before it was bought by Google, this framework was developed by Brat Tech. Students can buzz in. As you can see, it's the same question on the local and on the, and on the uh, tablet device. They can buzz in. It keeps track of what order the students did buzz in. Okay. And students can also rate the difficulty of the question. Uh, and that teacher gets the live feedback as the game progresses. So if the teacher wants to, say, find out what areas they should focus on more, if a lot of students are having difficulty with one particular question, she knows that she has to go over and review it. On the other hand, if they're not having any difficulty at all, she knows she can move on more effective use of her time. And if students are outliers, that they're really good at one subject or not, then she knows who to pair up in groups to get a more balanced group. So, um, uh, that's mainly the core of it, as you see. Again, it's the same on both views and uh, it updates pretty much instantly uh, and uh, we uh, save that data to the database and we can use that in visualization uh, later on in our development cycle. So uh, in conclusion I just wanted to say thank you for your time and um, I hope you uh, also check out uh, Peter Doe and Juan Sierra they're amazing, amazing people, and I'm proud to have been part of their team. Thank you.